Today on Made to Hack, I melt plastic so that it caters to my every whim. Alright, this is a plastic transformer. And so much as it transforms plastics into other things. Nice packing foam in here. Creality 3D printer user manual. Qualified certificate. Now is that the manual that has the qualified certificate? Ooh, invitation. Be the next customer of Creality Cloud. All right then. All right, I'm gonna take out some of these extruded aluminum pieces first. Ooh, there's the uh, touch LCD screen. There's the uh, extruder assembly. More bits and bobs. I guess this is the filament holder. Okay, this is, uh, I don't know. Oh, this is, oh, this is the actual print head. Yep, there we go. That's the print head, the new print head for this uh, version two, Creality 3D Ender. This one is, is it assembled? Seems to be assembled already on the unit. Okay, I guess the rest of it, the unit just comes out all together. All right. Okay, I'll just set this aside. We'll come back to the uh, main printer. Another one of the axis uh, motors. Another uh, extruded aluminum power cable. Tools. Scraper. Another one of the uh, axis carriages. More accessories and bits. Okay, we'll get the packing box out of the way. Okay, that leaves us with the uh, main unit here, already assembled. Okay. Okay, I guess the side piece maybe comes off. All right, there we have. Okay, so there's uh, the printer unit. And I think it, yeah, it goes in like this. So, for those of you that may have known about the Ender 3, the other versions, this one has the integrated power supply here. It built into the steel chassis. I'm just gonna go over uh, the installation real quick. I have it all set up. And then I'll uh, come back once it's assembled. Okay, so everything's well um, labeled. All the screws and the different parts are well labeled. Uh, the instructions are quite clear on how to get started. So, and even get, I guess, a bit of a, was it PLA or filament? It doesn't actually specify what type. And then I'm gonna just start uh, getting everything ready. I mean, really, we have to put up the Z-axis. Right, that would be essentially the first part. And then we install the Z-axis motor. Right. Then the belts go through, the nozzle kit, and so on and so forth. So I'll get that going. Thank you. 
Okay, so it's been close to a month, actually a few weeks since uh, I've had the printer. Um, there's been quite a steep learning curve, to be honest with it. I was expecting to get up and go a lot quicker, or at least to get successes a lot faster. However, there were quite a lot of failures, uh, some spectacular, <laughs> some fun, some downright annoying. Most of it has to do with bed leveling and bed adhesion. This is uh, very important. The first layer is without a doubt the most important. And once you get that one down properly, usually after that, everything is generally smooth sailing. So I've also had a few successes and, and it's starting to become more common to have successes rather than failures. So I've got it pretty well dialed in, at least with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I will try with larger nozzles as well in the future, but for now I'm sticking with the 0.4 and it's you know been an interesting journey so far. But yeah, bed leveling is uh, seems to be the key. It's incredibly important. So that's one piece of advice I could give is make sure your bed is well leveled and you've got good adhesion. So I've had a little time with the printer and sort of started getting to learn its uh, quirks and whatnot and what works and what doesn't. First things first, what is critical is you got to get the bed leveled well. And I've been using the, the paper method, using a bit of paper. So what you do is you start off at zero, zero everywhere. And you just see that it has a little bit of, just a little bit of give in the paper. Okay, so it just starts to rub on the tip. I've seen people using the post-it note type of paper. I like, um, it's sort of similar to post-it, they're just a bit thicker. Um, just like to get it underneath, so it just starts to grab. And you do that at all the three, all four corners. And you go around twice, and then also just so it starts to grab. If anything, I tend to have it a little looser or a little lower, if you will, than you know, than the manual says about 100 microns, but I like maybe 150 or 200 microns. Also, what I've noticed, I've had absolutely no success with uh, hairspray. So what I use is just like, a, you know, a glue stick. This is for PLA. Again, with the, what I didn't mention is uh, I check the bed leveling with uh, the bed preheated to PLA temperature. So I have it set to 70 degrees Celsius. What I do, I just give it a little bit of... Um, you know some glue stick and I find that the adhesion works a lot better now on this um, Ender 3 V2 it's got the, the the heat resistant glass I think they call it carbide glass or something with some kind of a like a heat resistant surface or silk screen on it uh, your surface may vary but this setup seems to work for me and uh, even for this newer type of bio PLA it works nice I like it and uh, I'm starting to get a lot more successes than failures so you know quite a bunch of prints that have come out okay some some not so much but still a learning process so that's sort of it for the initial installation of the Ender 3 version 2 uh, unboxing and installation. In an upcoming video, I just wanted to go over some of the upgrades in the upgrade pile here that I'm going to be making. Starting with a new uh, Teflon or PTFE uh, feed tube. This is, uh, I guess, the Capricorn brand. They seem to be a little more precise and hold, hold better over time. Since this is a Bowden 
printer, uh, the extruder pushes the filament through this longer loop uh, to get it into the, uh, to the nozzle. In the future I'm looking at a direct drive replacement of, of the feeder so it would be the, the filament would be driven right here close by it'll just sit on top but for now I'm still using a Bowden style so I figured I, I, I would get this upgrade this together with the metal extruding mechanism which will replace this plastic bit over here was a $25 accessory upgrade when I picked up the ender so it came out to the same price uh, uh, as it would be normal without the Black Friday deal so it was a $25 discount on the printer but I paid $25 for the upgrade so I got it for the same price. I will also be upgrading uh, the bed leveling springs which come up under here for these flat type die cut uh, they're a lot stronger they should hold up better and not be as susceptible to uh, getting, um, you know, the adjustment wheels um, undone. They should hold their position better once you've leveled everything. And of course, uh, I also picked up BL Touch version 3.1, which it'll do its auto leveling, and then you won't really have to worry with the fiddling. So. But that'll be yet another separate video since this requires uh, rewiring into the main board and a few other modifications, including these printed parts that I have here for the BL Touch, which um, I guess will come somehow installed here and it'll come down beside the, the nozzle. So. Th those are the upcoming videos on the Ender 3 version 2, so stay tuned and subscribe if you haven't done so. And um, yeah, catch you guys next time. Hey, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Also, make sure to turn on notifications to receive updates whenever I post a new video. If you like what you saw, hit that like button as well.